Typically, I don't do five videos in one month, but hey, here we are. So I've been really serious about work from home, remote work, cybersecurity, things like that, the benefits, the risks. But what makes a good work from home setup? So let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Chris Burns from Tech Gurus and welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about what makes a good work from home setup. Now, normally I talk about cybersecurity and it might filter in here a little bit here and there, but I really wanna talk about how do we construct a good setup to make sure that our employees are productive and they're comfortable with working from home. All right, number one, you need a good chair. And I'm not talking that $50 big box store special that's uncomfortable after 45 minutes. No, no, I'm talking about a chair that you can comfortably sit in for two, three, four, five hours and not move and you're not in pain. Now, we should also maybe think about a standing desk, which, you know, for you, maybe something that, that you cover. Not all employers are going to cover standing desks. It's a good option, um, especially at the office if people do come in the office. Uh, for me, I have a standing desk at the office. Everybody here has one. I have one at my house as well, but it's not necessarily required, but a good chair is. Number two, good internet or dedicated internet. Outside of the safety concerns of internet, one of the worst things you can have is when it's the summer, you're working from home, maybe you have kids, and they start streaming movies, playing video games, downloading things, and suddenly your work calls communications, maybe you're doing Teams or Zoom, starts being pixelated, you start cutting out, things start dropping. That's not ideal. But also, if you live in an area where your internet isn't quite stable, that's actually bad as well because it's hard to have connections into Teams and, and do video conferencing and things like that if your internet's unstable. So one of the things you want to look at is getting a stable internet. Now, if it's dedicated, that may mean doing some sort of other uh, maybe fiber internet if it's available for you. Sometimes 5G is actually pretty decent. Verizon is a good option. AT&T is a good option. So is T-Mobile. But if that's not really an option, it might be getting a second cable modem installed that's just dedicated to your workspace. Now, there are other ways of doing this, but just a good internet is critical for a good work from home experience. So let's move on to number three, a laptop or a desktop. Now, it depends. If you work from home exclusively, your employer might send you a desktop, which is pretty cool because if you never go in the office, there's no real need to go in the office. However, a laptop is very convenient because what you can do with an employee is you could give them one piece of equipment. When they come in the office, they can plug into a dock. You could also give them a dock for home where they can take it home, dock it, have two monitors, have everything set up. It's beautiful. Docks aren't terrible like they used to be. You can do USB Type-C docks. You can do Thunderbolt docks, more expensive, but then also requires some special equipment on the laptop but it's a much better experience for the employee. Plus they have all the ports you need, whether you need ethernet, whether you need more USB ports, it's beautiful. So for us, we like to use laptops with docks. But like, again, if somebody's working from home exclusively, a desktop is fine because you still hook up monitors and everything like that and it's, it's less cabling. So number four, I think dual monitors are a requirement. And I know a lot of people argue with that. If you have a laptop with one monitor, that's technically dual monitors, but it's really nice to have two matching monitors. Maybe you want to have one that's more landscape like you, you typically have, but your second one could be portrait to where it's vertical so you can fit more things on the screen because maybe it's just stuff that you need to monitor, but it's not stuff you need to look at constantly. Or you just want two landscape monitors, which is fine. But you can move things around. You can move your, your chat over to another window. You can have your email in another window. You can stay productive in front of you. I think dual monitors are a requirement. I put it here. You can disagree with me. I think more than two monitors is kind of sketchy. It depends on what you're doing. Some people will need three. But for the most part, most people would be fine with just two. All right, number five. Let's get rid of these crappy webcams. A laptop webcam, for the most part, is trash. Look, you look terrible. If you're going to be on Zoom, you're going to be on Teams, let's at least get good 1080p minimal webcams for people. Now, 4K is a little more than you need, but a good 1080p webcam that allows you to maybe adjust for light, light, bad light. You might want to get like a ring light behind somebody or a light that just like is put someplace to make sure that they're illuminated. 
But a webcam is very important because you're gonna be sitting on these meetings, you're probably showing your face. So let's make sure that you look your best and people can actually see you. And that brings us into number six is you really need a good microphone or headset. So the problem is if you don't have a good microphone and you're using like speakers, a lot of times you'll, the, the people on the other end will hear feedback. So a good headset's nice because you can go through and it'll like a dual array will like do do noise canceling on some of the other stuff, but then feed your voice. I use a Yeti mic, so it actually fits me well. I plug headphones in for my speakers. A lot of times when you'll see me in meetings, I'll actually be wearing uh, headphones, just typical three and a half millimeter headphones plugged in. That way I can hear really well. People don't get feedback and it makes it just a better experience. All right, those are my top six things for making a good work from home experience. Now you could take these things and actually apply them just to the office in general, right? Like all of these things are really good. Now the dedicated internet or good internet, I mean, that should be assumed in an office space, but this is a really good setup for people to enjoy their work, be able to work work the way they want if they're working from home, but also look good, sound good when they're in these meetings and have an overall good experience. So if you have any other tips that you'd like to do, drop a comment down below, let us know. Maybe we'll add them in or we'll do a post on this based on like the feedback we get. Fourth uh, of July weekend is coming up. Hope you enjoy your time. Hope you're safe with your family. And next month, I'll give you a hint. We're looking at the dark web. So until next time, have a safe 4th of July weekend coming up and stay cyber safe.